expected uh, participants and we are students. Uh, we are waiting for our guests to join. Uh, as soon as you join, we will be in the session. Uh, perhaps there is some problem of network on the screen. So I will give a message as well to find the one. So as soon as you join, we will try to get in the session.
हेलो सब लोग एक बार फिर से वेलकम वंस अगेन फ्रॉम द पोर ऑफ आवर हार्ट वी आर जस्ट वेटिंग फॉर द गेस्ट टू जॉइन देयर इज सम प्रॉब्लम विथ रिगार्ड टू द टाइम बिकॉज शी सेज दैट इन अमेरिका इट इज 10:40 और 10:40 समथिंग सो आई शुड बी जॉइन आफ्टर 15 और 20 मिनट्स एंड आई हैव सम जॉब टू एड्रेस so we have to wait for 15 more minutes she'll be joining uh, kindly bear with us or else uh, you may log it log out for 15 minutes and then rejoin us Thank <laughs> you. 
कल्पना दी नमस्ते माइक माइक अनम्यूट करना होगा देर इज अकॉन ऑफ माइक सो या कैन यू हियर मी यस 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 ओके गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन कैसे हैं आप लोग गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल ऑफ एस आर फाइन हियर एक्सेप्ट द कोरोना प्रॉब इश्यूज यस यस या रहमान Uh, we also welcome a very renowned short story writer in Urdu and Hindi, and a translator, and a very good friend, if I'm not wrong, of of our guest for today, uh, Khushid Hayat sir. We welcome him yeah, also. Yes. Ji. Khushid ji, Ada word hai. Khushid sir, my camera. Ada word hai, Ada word hai. uh we also welcome uh, other guests uh, respected guests joining us today the sure. faculty members from my college and the dear students uh, the guests for today uh, kalpana singh chitnis born and raised at gaya bihar she began to write poetry at the, at the age of 14 she moved to the united states in 1994 and when she moved to the united states you will not believe that this the, that she left a very prosperous and a very and a very uh, boom uh, booming and blooming career here she was at that time a lecturer of political science she was also engaged in acting and fashion modeling at mumbai at that time when she left for the united states in the states she lived at chicago for 9 years first and then now she is residing at los angeles uh, her, her thirst for knowledge and excellence can be seen in the fact that even after going to the united states and being a lecturer of political science here at india when she landed there at united states she did a lot of courses in film studies and if other different studies also uh, she has obtained her degree in film direction uh, from new york Film Academy, located at Universal Studios Hollywood, and that she did in the year 2004. Uh, she is also known for her directorial feature films like Goodbye My Friend and the uh, sorry Girl with an Accent. She is also the founder and the director at Silent River Film and Literary Society, and the curator and festival director at Silent River Film Festival in the United States. and for this establishment of silent river film festival she was acknowledged by california and several other states of 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 america uh she is yes a film person personality but she is a very strong and a very sensitive writer i would like to say a translator also and as i said a filmmaker and an actor she has authored four poetry collections so far she is also the chief editor of life and legends her works are constantly appearing in notable uh, magazines and journals like uh, world literature today uh, california quarterly and uh, the the very famous journal from sahitya academy titled indian literature and also in perrin's fontaine her poetry has been translated into many languages she participated in the silk roots project of international writing program at the university of iowa in the year 2014 sorry from the year 2014 to 2016 she studied buddhism through its scriptures at harvard she has also been invited to speak at various platforms like sahitya academy poets and writers awp and also at several international film festivals her awards and honors include nazi uh, naman literary prize that is the recent one in 2017 uh, rajiv gandhi global excellence award that was in 2014 and uh, bihar rajbhasha award that was in 1987 when she was there at gaya 
and Bihar Shri Award in 1988. So, and uh, she, and, and I was referring to that she has appeared in a lot of anthologies also. For example, 100 Great Indian Poems, uh, Collateral Damage, Carrying the Branch, Silk and Spice, Perrine's Fontaine, Equivers Space. So these are the anth anthologies in which her works has, have appeared. And the four uh, uh, poetry collections were titled as Bear Soul, which is a poetry collection in English. Taftiz Jari Hai, which has been recently republished, if I'm not wrong. Uh, Chand Ka, Ka Pevan is another collection of her poetry. And Nishan. Apart from this, as far as I know, she is a very strong uh, prose writer also, a short story writer also. And when we, when we were almost having our playing days at Gaya, we were in the high school. Uh, she was getting published in magazines like Kadhan Bini and all. And even some of her stories are translated into Urdu. And Khurshid Bhai uh, got those stories published in magazines like Adab Latif in Pakistan also, which is, as some of us may know, is a very noted magazine of Urdu literature. So with the deepest core of our heart, with all humility, we, uh, we, we welcome our guest for today and request her to take over their space. Alpna Di, the, the, the whole space is yours now. Please. Shukriya, bahut bahut shukriya aap sabka aur aap ne jo itna itne pyaar se mera introduction diya iske liye mein abhari hoon is liye bhi ki aap mujhe 25 saal se upar ho gaye bhaat se haan aay huye aur is taran bhaat saare loog bharat mein mujhe bhul chuke hai खास कर से कि जब से मेरा हिंदी से इंग्लिश में ट्रांजिशन हुआ एस राइटर सो आई विल सिंस दिस इज इंग्लिश सेशन आई वुड लाइक टू ऑफ कोर्स स्पीक इन इंग्लिश लेकिन जब भी हिंदुस्तान के हम अपने दोस्तों को देखते हैं साहित्यकारों को देखते हैं तो हिंदी और उर्दू लफ्स आ ही जाते हैं हमारे बात हमारी बातचीत म Thank you all of you for joining uh, me here and inviting me at uh, such a uh, credible platform uh, of uh, Karim City College in Jamshedpur. Um, you are doing wonderful work. I have watched a lot of videos online and I see um, the programs you are hosting. Um, of course, I am uh, just a small dot in front of all uh, other writers who are highly accomplished and I continue to learn from everyone. Uh, I believe um, I'm invited here to uh, talk as a poet uh, as well as a filmmaker. Um, so I consider myself as a poet first and filmmaker later. Um, however, um, both poet and filmmaker live side by side in me. Uh, they are not separated from each other. Um, I believe um, the poetry itself uh, introduces the poet. And uh, I do write um, on various uh, subjects uh, when I write poetry. In fact, actually, I uh, since I was listening to many other poets and I uh, watched the Keki Darwala's session, and like um, so many people were asking him to read um, purple poems, uh, love poems, and various other things. So <laughs> I, I just uh, have prepared myself accordingly. And um, uh, if uh, I have your permission, I would uh, like to start uh, with my poem. Um, so. Please let me know if uh, if everyone is ready, so I can begin. Yes, yes, they please. We are all ready. Thank you, thank you. Uh, when I think of India, I don't think of political India. I think India as a whole, which is the assimilation of all cultures, all languages, all the geographical beauty, our history and of course politics as well. So politics is just a part of who we are. And the rest of what India is all about is much bigger than politics. How I identify myself as a poet of Indian origin, 
a poet of Hindi and now a diaspora poet and a poet of English tongue. I have taken over so many different um, roles and personalities and identity in half a century of my life that sometimes I sit and ask myself a question, who am I? And um, the answer I, I get, uh, or uh, the answers I got when I wrote this poem is before you. So my very first poem is uh, called Trespassing My Ancestral Lands. Um, in fact, um, I, I, before I begin my poem, I want to thank um, Yahya not to call me, uh, not for calling me a migrant poet or Pravasi Bharti poet, because I feel uh, that is like distancing me from India. So there is a sentiment involved there other people don't understand. And uh, at Sahit Academy, some, when they call me Pravasi poet, when I have a request, when we come traveling to other countries from India, we bring India with us. We never leave India behind. And we treasure and value India more than perhaps many Indians, um, people, including my family. Um, sometimes when they talk, they tell me that I am more Indian than they are. So I consider it is as a compliment. But at the same time, uh, when somebody calls me a um, migrant poet, I feel uh, a kind of uh, being distanced from, from, from India. And uh, I don't want to be put in that basket. So thank you very much. And if, uh, uh, by all means, you have to level poets like us who have migrated to other country, uh, please call us world poet. Uh, I know every uh, poet is world poet in one sense because kabi ki koi sima nahi hoti, kabi har jagah hota hai. But especially when we come to other country. And if you really want to identify us on our, um, based on our geographical identity or our nationality or our citizenship, you can call us a global poet. So thank you so much for calling me Poets Beyond Borders. We have no borders. And uh, with that sentiment, I want to read this, read this poem. Um, because in my own country now, I'm a foreigner um, since I have uh, taken the American citizenship. Trespassing my ancestral lands. In my dreams, I often trespass my ancestral lands, looking for the centuries hidden in the hills, finding the history lost in the sands, searching for an oracle safe in ruins, not to be found and read. I often venture without any food and water in the lands of five rivers, emerging through the passages of a glorious civilization. I have no shoes, only my garb and a scarf that I'm afraid of losing to the desert winds. An amulet is strung around my neck reads an ayat of Quran. An amulet strung around my neck reads an ayat of the Quran, may Almighty bless the daughter of the idol worshippers out to defy the borders and demarcations. There were only destinations before the birth of nations. In my dreams, I often wonder who carved my face and disappeared in the winds. I wonder, where did my ancestors come from? Were they Aryan, Dravidian, Mughal, or Turk, Greek, Mongol, or Tughlaq? What mountains did they cross? What oceans did they brave? And the roads they traveled, were they made of silk, rocks, or gravels? 
and the road they traveled were they made of silk, rocks, or gravel? What battles did they fight before surrendering to the light? Where did they slip away from their homes in old palaces or viharas? What food did they eat? What songs did they write and sing? Did they speak Sanskrit, Prakrit, Farsi, or Pashto? I'm bewildered in the desert like a dervish. I'm bewildered in the desert like a dervish, like a Sufi, leaving behind a trail of songs for a caravan lost in the desert storms. In my dreams, I search for the Buddha in the forest and Muhammad in a cave. I look for Krishna in the battlefield and Chanakya in Takshishila. In the alleys of towns and villages, I look for Ghalib, Rumi and Khayyam. In the temples, I looked for Mira, Kabir, and Tulsi, and Rama in a Gurkul. In my dreams, I remain uncaptured. In my dreams, my dreams are valid. In my dreams, I sleep in seven continents and wake up with the sun on the roof of the universe. An eagle hovers over me in the skies, flapping wings, Shading colors, protecting my dreams that can never be a part of the history one will ever like to write. That can never be a part of the history one will ever like to write. Ab ye to Bharat se jo meri samvedna judi hai, us par ye kavita thi. और um, मैं कह रही थी कि बीच में अगर आप कुछ कहना चाहें तो बिल्कुल कहेंगे um, मेरे लिए कोई इंटरप्शन नहीं है तो आप कमेंट कर सकते हैं या कुछ बीच में पूछ भी सकते हैं इसके पहले कि मैं अब दूसरी कविता शुरू करूं एक कविता मैं अमेरिका के सेंटीमेंट से आपको सुनाती हूं uh, जब मैं भारत में थी व्हेन आई वाज इन इंडिया uh, I was um, a part of uh, the progressive writers' movement. Uh, Kurshid Hayat knows that we were uh, part of uh, Janwadi Lekhak Sang. My teacher was uh, Surendra Chaudhary, uh, the president uh, in, in Bihar of Pragati Shil Lekhak Sang. So I grew up with all people who I see here, and I, I know most of you because I. I have kept contact, I have been reading, I, I, I have tried to know uh, even the new people who are coming in literary scene in India. Uh, not very many people may know me in India, especially of the generation after us. So uh, sometimes they ask me on Facebook, what do you do? So um, <laughs> then I say, I just write for poetry. So um, when I, that was the last thing I ever had thought that I would come to America because America is sinister, the warmonger, the, 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 um, I mean, we, the communist people who believed in communist ideology and all those revelations are now coming to a capitalist country. But um, after coming to America, I experienced many things and I start to seeing things um, from a different angle and I realized that most of us in life um, do not see things from 360 degree angle. We, we are seeing from 180 degree from our side and we are completely missing the other side. Uh, whereas many things which we said say about America is true. And, um, but there is a other side of America mm, that makes one feel assured at the same time. Uh, makes us feel, um, it, it, it gives um, many opportunities for us to realize that is not available elsewhere in other countries. And as much I loved India and India gave me everything at a, such a young age that one person, a poet, writer, filmmaker only dream of. Um, when I came to America, I uh, uh, reinvented myself as a filmmaker. I always wanted to go to um, Pune Film Institute to study directing. My, my parents were not able to send me. 
and uh, after a certain time your dreams are just over and it's a culture where as when I came in a country where age doesn't matter time doesn't matter you put your um, you know vision your hard work your determination and you can make things happen for yourself now, that doesn't mean that uh, everything is perfect here America is like any other country with all things that that uh, is not so good exist here also. Uh, but to a level where uh, it never felt to me personally that this is not a place where I want to live. Or I should uh, express my dissatisfaction towards this country in a way I used to express about America when I was in India. So with that sentiment, I have written this poem called America. This time when I boarded the plane to return to America, I felt a peace within. A peace that had finally returned to me after 20 years. This time I did not fly on the wings of imaginations or dreams. I flew on the wings of aluminum and steel that will finally take me home, away from my home. Would that make me a lesser daughter, sister, friend, or a patriot? If I'm not able to see the land below rising from the ground up in the air, with my eyes filled with tears, saltier than my Indian sea, would that be unfair to say that I'm destined to a safe island, still quivering in hope, among hundreds of faces, Sitting in the plane, I could easily identify the face of America. Among hundreds of faces sitting in the plane, I could easily identify the face of America and its smile served to me like a warm blanket in my seat for me to peacefully fall asleep and migrate into my soul silently, no longer in search of a land of opportunities but love that knows no boundaries of nations, my ultimate destination. But, <clears throat> like you all hear, many things about America, uh, such as right now, let's say the racial discrimination, um, the Black Lives Matters um, movement, um, of course, we have always uh, called America the policeman of the world, um, a country that is known for um, invading other countries and many other things. Um, so I had my own slice and taste of uh, racial bias and discrimination because in such a big country, of course, you will find somewhere some people who see you differently but I'm fortunate and I'm truthful in my statement that most of people do not see that way so this one this poem actually I lived this poem 25 years ago but I wrote this poem after living this poem for 25 years only last year which published in a magazine um, and it was uh, very appreciated. It's called the pending introduction of KSC. KSC is the initial of my first and last name, Kalpana Singh Chitnis. The pending introduction of KSC. I had just uh, enrolled myself to take some classes of creative writing in College of DuPage. Even though I had a master's degree, I had to start from somewhere. So in order to take classes, I enrolled myself at College of DuPage in Illinois, which is a northern suburb of Chicago. And the first day when I was, um, I went uh, to attend the class, uh, our teacher came and he asked everyone sitting, uh, students sitting next to each other to, uh, to introduce themselves. So, I had to introduce a person who was sitting next to me and then the other person had to do the same to other. Whereas um, where I was sitting, 
there was a young boy who was sitting next to me. Um, he was supposed to introduce me. So let's see what happens. I wrote this poem after living this for 25 years. The Pending Introduction of KC. I'm not sure whether it is pitiful or powerful, but here I am, still trying to make sense of everything. I do not know why Timothy Jones, sitting next to me in the class, chose not to make my introduction when we all introduced a student sitting next to us. I'm not sure whether it is pitiful or powerful, but here I am, still trying to make sense of everything. I do not know why Timothy Jones, sitting next to me in the class, chose not to make my introduction. When we all introduced a student sitting next to us, Mr. Meisner went blank. Mr. Meisner went blank when he inquired if he can introduce someone else and chose to introduce Alan. Was it because I was colored? Was it because I was a woman? Or was it because I was different? I do not know why Mr. Meisner didn't ask any question to Timothy Jones. I do not know why I didn't ask any question to Mr. Meisner myself. I just sat there like a stump of a tree. I just sat there like a stump of a tree. I am still sitting there in my class for the past 25 years next to Timothy Jones. I'm still sitting there in my class for the past 25 years next to Timothy Jones, waiting for Mr. Meisner to come and ask him a question. But would he ever return? But would he ever return? The lectures begin and end, but the questions remain. Everyone comes and goes, but I do not leave. I must keep waiting until someone introduces me. So this was the, the poem I wrote uh, last year, uh, the pending introduction of KSC. So yeah, mm, this is also America. But uh, the most challenging part as a poet and a creative person for me was when I moved to America was to reestablish myself as a poet because in India I was known as a poet of Hindi tongue. But when I came, people in America did not know what is the difference between Hindi and Hindu. They would ask me, oh, so you speak Hindu? And I say, no, Hindu is, Hindus are people who live in India and Hindi is a language the Hindi peop Hindu people speak. And then, then is the religion which you call Hindu, but we don't call that religion Hindu religion. You guys gave us the name, our religion, the Hindu religion. It is called Sanatan Dharma. So there are many aspects of this cultural thing people don't understand. And um, so I tried to communicate with them with my English, which was at that point was not quite uh, American English, of course. How would I know American English? I never interacted with any American person. I never watched any American television. I never listened to any American radio. I barely read uh, American uh, poets. Uh, even if I knew any English that was British English, we, we listened to BBC radio at home. Um, at the time when I was growing up in India, we didn't have television until we were teenagers. Is that correct, Krishi? So it's, um, um, was how would I know the English you speak? I'm a poet and I'm an established poet. Uh, I had uh, three books published before I came here. 
and my books had won um, um, big awards. I, I published in top magazines. I published in Hans, um, Dharam Yuga, Saptahik Hindustan, Pahal, uh, Vartman Sahitya, I mean, Kadamani. I mean, name, you name one magazine. Um, actually, because of Kursheed, how much work since 82 to 85 you translated, I mean, most of Urdu magazines. Um, my work were published even in Pakistan, like, uh, Dr. Wazir Aga and everyone uh, wrote about my book, uh, Mazar Imam, um, Ramlal, um, I mean many Urdu writers um, who, who wrote about my book and um, it was like a shock that you become all of a sudden nothing even you cross the border. And um, I tried to translate my work but translation would not work here. Uh, that was not considered as, as a good translation because you have to be idiomatic. You have to have the uses of English, which was American English. So slowly and slowly, this is what happened, that um, creativity lives when it is nurtured. And um, the uh, inspiration is the sunlight for the creativity. And when it, you don't get that sunlight, uh, that water that nurtures, uh, the creativity start to die. But um, I was a, like a beach, which, which as much it was inside, it was outside. So every leaves fall, doesn't matter. If the um, bare branch doesn't matter. All my poetry were dedicated to the winds. Everything is gone with the winds. I was back to zero as a poet. And I had a question before me, should I let my poet die? Uh, I tried to send my work um, in India, but at that time was not, internet came in 1994, after I moved here. So I said, we should just send um, poems and writers and um, journalists and sorry, uh, editors received it, they respond to you. Many letters, many work that I sent to magazine, I never wrote back. Because perhaps that didn't reach them. Milk ki situation has been both karap hai India mein. Or fir waha se jawab bhi nahi aate the loon ke kyunki bhai aerogram se har koi nahi bejna chahta. To mein unki bhi unki limitations ko samaj sakti hai. It was very uh, discouraging and disappointing that at the same time you are uh, put in a box uh, as a as a pravasi poet, as if like all of a sudden India has nothing to do. Uh, once I moved to, uh, to the United States. And um, I really, really appreciate the writers of older generation. Um, and I, I want to, I have some complaints, but in a loving way to my generation people that we did, didn't learn much from our older generation. The courtesy, the love, the support, the encouragement if you, they used to see if you have a spark, they will nurture you, they will support you, they will publish you. Whereas with my generation, this is like a competition. Um, it's a, like a rat's race. It's like getting ahead of one another. I mean, it, it becomes so uh, with the age of internet, when everything came out in open, it was a vicious war of ideology. It was vicious war of favoritism. Uh, and it was, it was just like a, all of a sudden you are branded a capitalist and I am telling you truthful, uh, it's not just my imagination because I have received letters from the writers, I have received the rejections from the people because I dare to speak on certain topics which does not agree to your ideology. Like for an example, I'm giving uh, you one example that uh, I am a born, I'm born in a Hindu family but live a Buddhist way of life by choice. And not because Hinduism was not good enough for me. Actually, I uh, they, uh, Hinduism earned more respect from me when none of my Hindu family member ever questioned me why I go to the Buddhist monastery for my meditation. Whatever I want to do, my parents were fine, my grandparents were fine, their religion was not threatened. And But the reason I started Buddhism, because I felt a kind of association. We believe in past life, I don't know, I was a monk or what, I don't know. But <laughs> I, I always felt, whenever I saw saffron robe and 
Buddhist people meditating in Bodh Gaya and the bell, um, that gong going off, it will invoke something in me and um, I felt I feel more comfortable and the simple Buddhist teaching actually taught me more about how to connect to myself and that element was missing in 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 in, in Hindu um, culture because we basically never go out to teach our religion to anyone we we don't even teach anything neither meditation or to do if you are Hindu fine if you don't just go learn by yourself so it was I was looking for a mentor I was looking for someone to guide me the path so I can um, connect to myself and find uh, the peace and um, the balance in myself so for that reason I um, turned into Buddhism and the more I studied because I was teaching political science in college actually my my uh, research was on conflict and cooperation among South Asian countries so I deeply study the South Asian politics so what was happening in Pakistan or still happening in Pakistan or in Bangladesh and Nepal and uh, other South countries Sri Lanka uh, I, it's not nothing that uh, I'm new it, it's new to me so it just comes naturally Naturally, and I felt what China was doing in in uh, to Tibet and the Tibetan people was very unfair. Uh, I'm always asked cross question if I talk about that. Or what do you feel about Kashmir? I'll come come to Kashmir later. But um, then I wrote some poem on uh, on Tibetan issue, uh, human rights issue when monks were burning themselves, when nuns were burning themselves, they were being raped. There. Um, religious scriptures were burned, their bompas were burned down, they were not allowed to speak to their language, uh, speak their language. So I wrote some poems and sent to a magazine called Tibet Bulletin. And Tibet Bulletin published some of my poems on human rights issues uh, in Tibet. This is where I had, I felt a shift from uh, movement, the Janwadi movement. Uh, a lot of writers wrote, and one person went far enough to tell me, "Agar aap me chapas ki bhook itni hi thi, to hume keh diya hota, aap ki kavitaein ham badi badi magazines me chapwa dete. Tibet par likhne ki kya zarurat thi? Ham janwadi hain. Well, if an ideology does not have humanity, that ideology is no good for me. And is tarah ke attitude aay din dekhne ko milte hain." अब तो मैगजीन्स आपकी रचनाओं को की प्राप्ति की सूचना तक नहीं देखेंगे वो ऊपर देख लेंगे शीर्षक देख लेंगे और आपकी रचनाओं को रिजेक्ट कर देंगे आफ्टर कमिंग टू अमेरिका है बिकम अ ग्लोबल पोएट इन द सेंस आई नॉट ओनली कीप इन टच विद पोएट्स इन इंडिया बट आल्सो पोएट्स इन अदर पार्ट्स ऑफ वर्ल्ड इंक्लूडिंग पाकिस्तान एंड यू विल बी वेरी सरप्राइज हाउ मेनी पीपल फ्रॉम आजाद कश्मीर दे आर माय फ्रेंड एंड क्लोज फ्रेंड्स they call me baji they call me i mean they the respect i get from uh, kashmiris from pakistan i do not get the same respect from india because of course there is a um, there's a different uh, way of looking at the, uh, in the politics and rest of the indians who are non kashmiris and i wrote so many poems because those people share their um their part of you know what they are going through with me and i wrote many poems on kashmir on both sides and i don't know if many people know but khurshid hayat if you remember i went in 1992 to kashmir um you know, when all those things were happening and i wrote so many poems on kashmir after coming back which is which was part of my poetry collection in taftish jari and in 1993 so uh, i've been writing on on kashmir all along and i do see where the problem is um we also as a, a teacher of political science uh, i also cannot be fooled into um what people are trying to teach through whatsapp or um, by a facebook message or harassing you or telling you so we had to go through so many things and people would not publish because um they have to follow a certain guidelines so i have stopped sending uh, my work to india i don't send to any magazine because they would not publish it because as a buddhist i have found a balance in my outlook i am not saying that i reject left but i also learned i cannot survive 
if I reject the right as well, because if you look yourself, this neck, this neck, which has our head on it, is rest on both shoulders, left and right. One cannot exist without other. Where we are dismissing each other. We are not understanding each, each other's point of view. So, of course, all this philosophy uh, and uh, nurturing, uh, you know, getting to the other stage of life, um, I assimilated in... Hello? Hello? Yeah, here? Yeah? Yes, they please continue. Biplak oh, Ghosh, do not so. present yourself. Uh, Biplak okay, Ghosh, please do not present yourself. Deep okay, continue. because I see some Biplak Ghosh is coming uh -huh. on the screen. Uh, we, we are I requesting him not to present. Yeah, it's okay now. Oh, okay. I just want to make sure we are there. Anyway, long story short, um, um, I, I, I won't say that I had a shift, a complete shift, because uh, all I say that I tried to find a balance in my thinking, in my life, and it was very important for me to sustain in, in a new country and find my path. But uh, again, back to the same thing, neither it, I had India after coming from America, and nor I had America because America would not understand my language. Uh, so basically, I could see the imminent death of my poet. So uh, what to do? Uh, people uh, sometimes tell me, oh, you are English, you are English, you have given me a lot of joy. You have also written me a lot of joy, but you are writing in English. You don't write in English, you don't write in English, like you eat a day of biryani. You eat a whole lot of food in India. Now you go to another country, you don't eat a whole lot of food, 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 you don't eat a whole lot of food. So, I didn't have a lot of English, but I was destined to be a poet of English. I had no choice. It wasn't my choice to become a poet of English then. I was destined to be a poet of English then. Then I said, no, I'm not going to make this decision. Oh, let's start with the English poet. I said, unless I will start dreaming in English, I'm not going to write in English. So for a few years, for seven, eight, almost nine years, I didn't write much. Even though I wrote, I had no courage to send anywhere. Because as I said, India would not publish my work. America would not publish my work. So I kept to myself. So many things perhaps uh, will come out when I will write my memoir of what happened to, to a person like me. And um, so, but it happened one day. It happened just so that na ki barish hoti hai, barish hoti rehti hai, aur ek beej jo andar, jisme jo jivatta hoti ho, marta nahi hai. Ki upar se uske patte gaib ho gaye, uska tana kaat diya, us sab kuch nesto nabud usko kar diya. Lekin uski jalo me fir bhi kuch aisa tha, jo ki kafi barish hone ke baad usme se panak karaya. Aur wo barish aankhon se bhi hui, dil ke andar bhi hui. साथ समुंदर पार बैठे मेरे फैमिलीज मेरे फ्रेंड्स उन दिनों को नहीं जानते एंड आई प्राइड माय सेल्फ इन इन टेलिंग दैट आई हैव लिव्ड अ रियल लाइफ आई हैव सर्वाइव्ड एंड सेट एन एग्जांपल फॉर माय चिल्ड्रन एंड इफ इट इंस्पायर्स समवन समवन एल्स टू दैट्स फाइन इफ नॉट आई एम नॉट हियर टू विन एन एनी अवार्ड � but um, it was sort of a miracle for me to reincarnate as a, as a poet of English tongue. So with this sentiment, I'm gonna, I have written one more poem. 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 I have Many poems I'm going to write, which I have lived for 25 years, but never wrote those poems. This poem is called The Language We Speak. How possibly you could have heard me speak? How possibly you could have heard me speak? I barely knew your language before, but I've always wanted to tell you why I had traveled so far from the land I belong to and did not belong. But I could not speak. 
my words were inadequate, lumped in my throat. But I could not speak. My words were inadequate, lumped in my throat. And one day I emptied all the letters of my language in a chest, locked them and went silent. And one day I emptied all the letters of my language in a chest, locked them and went silent. I did not starve, but I felt deprived. I was not abandoned, but I felt alone. I was not lost, but I could not find what I was looking for. And one day I died. And one day I died and I was buried in your bosom like a pharaoh. And one day I died and was buried in your bosom like a pharaoh with all my grains and gold, with all my silk and songs, with all my love and loss. And now I'm one with you. I'm your mountains and prairies. I'm your oceans and deserts. I'm your air and sunshine. Oh, America, I'm your glory and prayers. I'm your shame and guilt. I'm your pride and prejudice. I'm the language we speak. So, ye, meri kahani America ki hai. और भी कहानियां हैं उनको मैं किसी अगले कन्वर्सेशन के लिए रखूंगी आप पढ़ेंगे किसी किताब में बट लेट मी आस्क यू आम यहया एंड आप सभी लोग जो आप यहां हैं आई नो यू आर आस्किंग केकी टू रीड पोम्स ऑन डिफरेंट टॉपिक्स सो आई हैव कलेक्टेड सम सम पोम्स व्हिच आर सेंटिमेंटल पोम्स लव पोम्स पॉलिटिकल पोम्स um environmental poem and cultural poem i think cultural poem i i read um let me read a uh, a couple of political poems but those political poems are from through humanitarian eyes uh my political poems are not um bolte na ki narebaji wo nahi hai main kisi ki political ideology ki baat nahi karti but uh, how i have looked at certain political issues through my own lens um as a human being to wo um main aapko pad ke sunati hu ek choti si kavita hai paul gaza I am Gaza. Not too long ago, I was Kosovo. Bipla Ghosh, do not present yourself. You are disturbing. Please, Bipla Ghosh. Do please go ahead. I'm uh, sorry about that. Um, so the poem is Gaza. Uh, I'm Gaza. Not too long ago, I was Kosovo. Then I became Baghdad by River Tigris. Not too long ago, I was Kosovo. Then I became Baghdad by River Tigris. Then I turned into Syria and Ukraine, crippled and bled to death, only to wake up again without any eyes or limbs. without any heart or soul and today i'm gaza covered in ashes shooting rockets taking bullets you can call me hatred or hope that cannot die or love that cannot live long enough you can call me hatred or hope that cannot die or love that cannot live long enough to jab bhi main in cheez palestine ki baat karti hu ye karti hu to of course in america is the same politics what we have in india 
लेफ्ट राइट की पॉलिटिक्स आइडियोलॉजी की पॉलिटिक्स तो लोग हमेशा कहते हैं कश्मीर Do you have anything to say about Kashmir? And I said, of course. You have not read my book. I have written many poems on Kashmir. But um, hey, I don't go proving to other people um, how I feel about Kashmir. But when the Article uh, 370 um, was abrogated, uh, the, there was reactions all over the world um, in favor and against to both. and me a person who has not just seen kashmir on political map but have been there and have been there in deep in 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 the places where things happened and you might ask how did i go there uh, well in 19 um 92 i was invited to read poetry there on radio station so i traveled to jammu and kashmir but uh, i wanted to go and see uh, kashmir but uh, a lot of people came from military containment with, with, just to read the poem because a radio station perhaps they somehow got the news and some people who who have read who had read my work um, in magazines they have told me if i ever come to kashmir let know so we were group of 6 7 people from bihar wo aapko malum hoga kurshid hayat ram naresh pathak ye sabhi gaye hue the some of us were told um, we were escorted by military in those areas where normal people would not go i even went to all the um, refugees camp um, i interviewed people i met people i have heard the story i saw both sides so that's why i cannot easily buy the lie many lies and the way we are presented uh, on international platform due to the kashmir issue because i have seen both the sides um so anyway uh, since uh, 370 draw lot of reactions how would i possibly have not had some reactions but i had i have become mature enough to see things uh, not as facebook is trying to show us or twitter is trying to show us or whatsapp messages are trying to show us but to knowing the kashmir the what uh, how i see kashmir like i told you how, how i see india i told you how i see america and how i see kashmir but i i uh, if correct me if i'm wrong there are a lot of people who have written poem about kashmir but tell me the poets who have written about kashmir yet. I mean, what Kashmir? Kashmir is just a geographical thing that you love about it, or Kashmir is all about everything that Kashmir is known for. So I don't read poem of about Kashmir yet. People are afraid of talking about Kashmir yet because that can open the whole uh, other can of worm, and uh, they want to be politically correct. But. Um, पहले तो इंडियन थी जनवादी थी फिर अमेरिकन हो गई तो नीम पे करेला आई आई एम नॉट अफ्रेड एनी मोर ऑफ व्हाट कैन हैपन टू मी एज अ पोएट आई हैव सरवाइव्ड ऑल द स्टॉर्म्स सो व्हाई नॉट टू स्पीक माय माइंड सो आई थ्रू माय लेंस आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट माय रिएक्शन ऑन 370 एंड आई वेरी मच वांटेड टू राइट अ पोएम अबाउट कश्मीर एट एंड दिस इज माय ट्रिब्यूट टू कश्मीर इन अ वेरी लविंग वे ओनली इफ वी कैन पुट द पॉलिटिक्स असाइड फॉर 5 मिनट सो दिस इज कॉल इन्फोकेशन उस वक्त दशहरे का समय आया हुआ था मोहालया शुरू था दो महीने के बाद ही ऑफकोर्स इट हैपन इन ऑगस्ट और हमारा अक्टूबर में होता है बट कश्मीर की स्थिति ठीक नहीं थी मैंने उस पर कविता लिखी इन्वोकेशन एट्रीब्यूट टू कश्मीर आई हैव नॉट स्पोकन टू माई मदर इन टू मंथ्स I have not spoken to my mother in two months but I know she is there she cannot disappear she cannot be imprisoned or killed i wonder if she is sleeping jago ma jago be awakened mother goddess my mother is the daughter of the himalaya On the occasion of Mahalia, I cannot stop thinking about her. Of course, because last time we went to Ashno Devi, so that was in my head. On the occasion of Mahalia, I cannot stop thinking about her and all her relatives, like Shiva and Parvati, 
their little boy Ganesha, their bull, and many others who live in Kashmir. Shalputri, the daughter of the mountains, I hope you are doing well. I hope you have the freedom to go anywhere you want. I hope the mobile network is working in your area. Do you have enough food and water in your cave? I hope your trees are still bearing fruits and your glaciers are kind to your rivers. I hope your valley is still growing flowers and the dark clouds are filled with rain. Mother, have you talked to Shiva and Parvati, peasants and boatmen, saints and peers after the demise of Article 370? How are you taking it yourself? I hope little Ganesha is not afraid of going to school. I hope no one has thrown stones at you and your people still love you. I also hope no one has hassled and raped you. Just, uh, I'm going to stop a second for one thing. There are many in, um, incidents that have happened in Kashmir Valley. Perhaps you can see the reflection. You can identify those events. I don't want to tell them because that going to make the poem flat. I'll leave it up to you to guess and you, you can tell what events are those. I hope no one has thrown stones at you and your people still love you. I also hope no one has hassled and raped you and the world is only lying. Brahmacharni, the sacred one, you do not know. The reporting of the New York Times, the BBC, the Washington Post and Al Jazeera make me worry. They write, all is not well in Kashmir, although the Prime Minister says, all is well. Mother, I do not know whom to believe. My friends from the left or the right, my friends from the east or the west, to keep my hopes alive, I only watch Indian and Canadian news. Chandraghante, you have helped Mission Chandrayaan. Can't you protect your own abode? Can't you bless your own land? Ma, Jago, Tum Jago, the Muazin is calling for prayers. Ma, Jago, Tum Jago, the Muazin is calling for prayers. Mother, go to Srinagar to comfort Abdullah and Mufti. Go to Ladakh to assure monks and nuns in the Gompas. In Jammu, visit the pundits, void the void of hopes, living in refugee camps. Set, about, set up a bilateral meeting with Imran Khan. Listen to him when he talks about Islam. Do not worry about defending Hinduism. Do not worry about defending Hinduism, it will defend itself. Kushmanda, the creator of the universe, create a new Kashmir. Wash your wounds with five rivers. Call Hanumana to fetch Sanjeevani. Revive the dead sleeping in graves and bleeding on the border in snowstorms. They all are your children born from your eternal womb. Sing them the songs of Sufis that you have fed them through your breast milk. Bring out your Santur, Veena and Rawab. Your children are afraid of the sounds of silences, guns and explosions. Iskandamata, summon your brave son Iskanda. Chosen by the God to lead in the war against evil, bring victory to all your offsprings. Bring light to the eyes that can no longer see. Bring light to the eyes that can no longer see. Bring joy to the hearts that cannot sing. Bring your children home for celebration. It has been long, so long. Katyaini. Let your lion roar in the mountains to tell the demons not to venture in your homeland. Invite Kalhana and Parantha to write the history of paradise on earth once again, a history the world must envy. 
Kalratri, the fierce one. Let all your ten hands work harder, day and night, 24 hours. There is a lot to do in the valley. Call Hazrat Makdum in Sopor, Sheikh Nuruddin in Kulgam. Call Huan Sang from China, invite Arhats, Bodhisattva, Shankrachare and Kashyap to give you a hand in draining the blood from the ancient lake and regain paradise. Let your donkey carry the bags of apple and peaches, herbs and almonds, medicine and pashmina and deliver to the homes that cannot wait to open their doors and windows to the sunlight. Mahagori, the fair one, let the world envy your luminous beauty and wisdom that sparkles the water of the lake and the cliffs of your glorious mountain dipped in saffron. The evil may return again to stain your splendor, but do not let anyone touch you over. Do not let them steal you from your horses grazing in orchard and violate you in your temple. The evil may return again to stain your splendor, but do not let anyone touch you over. Do not let them steal you from your horses, grazing in orchards and violate you in your temple. Siddharatri, the bestower of all blessing, someday, when peace returns to Kashmir, invite Habba Khatun, Lal Deed, Shahid Ali, and all other poets of your land for a poetry reading in a shikara. And please, please keep open for poets like Huzaifa Pandit and me. I have earned an invitation from him to visit Kashmir. After a long argument that I won with him, do not invite press and media without credential. But allow, but allow a visa to Jamil from across the LOC. He, write, he likes poetry and wants to see his Srinagar, the Srinagar of Raja Gulab Singh, his king. But please do not tell him. But please. Do not tell him that there are no kings and queens in Kashmir anymore. They all died in a raid long ago and their subjects have been defeated in the game of check and met. We all have played along together. And their subjects have been defeated in the game of check and met. We all have played along together. This is a hundred line poem on Kashmir. I hope I have not offended anyone's sentiment. Beautiful. Um, thank you. Yeah, yeah. If somebody wants to join, why don't you have him invite him uh, I, uh, first? Yeah, I was just thinking about that. If you can just uh, uh, recite one poem from a gender thing. I mean, I mean, one poem on the women uh, uh, subject or topic okay. and then one on environment and then we will bring in the discussion. Okay, wonderful. So, as I said, I would, um, yeah, um, I will give you the sampling. I will sample try try to make any of the map for little, little poems which I will read it quick and because my environmental poem is uh, kind of two pages, uh, but uh, it will be worth perhaps uh, listening because I have put a lot of effort in writing it. So I'm going to go quick on short poems for women, women rights. Okay. Yes, yes, and yes, uh, uh, I was invited to send some poems, actually, uh, violence on women, even though um, that subject um, personally doesn't, uh, I mean, I, I'm not a victim of a violence myself, but I have seen women close to me who have been victim of violence. And um, I wrote this poem so, uh, on, on those women. Uh, <clears throat> so this, these three poems were translated uh, into other European language recently. Uh, one poem is called Scars. You have bruises on your body, I said. You have bruises on your body, I said. 
none of your business, she responded and left. None of your business, she responded and left. I carry her scars now. This, this is a true, true uh, story. You have bruises on your body, I said. None of your business, she responded and left. I carry her scars now. One poem um, is again an audacious poem and asking for forgiveness from everyone who, whose sentiment get hurt. But um, I, I, I wrote it and it is published, so I'm going to read that to you. A drum and an illiterate, a shudra and an animal, and a woman, they all deserve beating. A drum and an illiterate, a shudra and an animal, and a woman, they all deserve beating. Why did Tulsidas write this? I'm not sure. Why did Tulsidas write this? I'm not sure. All I know that the woman in this centuries old verse is no longer there. All I know that the woman in this centuries old verse is no longer there. She is here. She is here and dares the author an interview on her channel. All I know that the woman in this century's old verse is no longer there. She is here and dares the author an interview on her channel. There's another uh, poem on violence against women. I was the witness of this. Uh, I still live the pain of that woman. Uh, and I always wonder how people uh, recover from such trauma. Taking the persona of that po uh, victim, I write this poem. Nothing should have mattered. Nothing should have mattered. His sadness, his grief, his heart tossed in a dark river by an evil witch. She should have known better. There was no one to blame. The lover was slain by his own hatred. The lover was slain by his own hatred and was left bleeding to die in a sinking boat. His heart had surrendered to the darkness. He had drowned in a bottle. His heart had surrendered to the darkness. He had drowned in a bottle. There was no one to rescue. She should have known better, but she didn't. There was no one to rescue. She should have known better, but she didn't. Go to them who violate you and rejoice, he said. Go to them who violate you, violate you and rejoice, he said. A woman patriarch? A woman priest? How dare? A woman patriarch, a woman priest, how dare a nightmare unfolds and animals appear fearful from the mountain trails. And animals appear fearful from the mountain trails to see human feed on human souls in sheer astonishment. To see human feed on human souls in sheer astonishment. One poem um, I'm going to read to you, uh, which is coming uh, in Bloomsbury's uh, next edition. Uh, there's an anthology coming from of on love poems. Um, in the West, since I have been writing in English, uh, people uh, recognize me. Uh, as a poet of uh, love. So I'm going to just uh, read one, one of the poem and then I'll read the environmental poem. <clears throat> this poem is called Wind Horse. Uh, you might have seen uh, the Lungta, the Tibetan prayer flags, which is always in the mountains and any Buddhist places on shrines or temple. So those, uh, that word, uh, Tibetan word, lungta means wind horse uh, in English. So a poem is 
color form is before you. I won't question where you go when you are bewildered, what you do, who you spend your night with. I'm neither a beloved nor a wife. I won't question where you go when you are bewildered, what you do, who you spend your night with. I'm neither a beloved nor a wife. I'm simply your home. My roof is to give the shade you need and my walls to keep you warm and safe without ever questioning your return. My windows are to bring air and sunshine and my door to welcome you every time you return. And like no other, my heart like a wind chime to greet you in the rustling winds. And like prayers written on flags, I travel in the air. When you set out to the destinations known and unknown, only to ensure your safe return home every time when you are lost. Now, uh, I will go jump to the environmental poem. And of course, to keep the environment, we need water. Keep the environment going, we need water. अभी पैंडेमिक के कारण हमने हम लोग तो देख ही रहे हैं भाई एनवायरनमेंट का क्या हाल हुआ है एंड हाउ इट हैज अफेक्टेड द एंटायर वर्ल्ड वी आर मोस्ट ऑफ अस आर अवेयर ऑफ द सफरिंग्स ऑफ मैनकाइंड हाउ ह्यूमैनिटी वी हैव सफर्ड बट नॉट वी हैव नॉट यू नो पेड अटेंशन टू हाउ द अदर लिविंग क्रिएचर्स ऑन अर्थ हैव सफर्ड फ्रॉम पैंडेमिक and so this is a uh, american take on uh, birds in pandemic kyunki lockdown mein main din bhar chidiya dekhti hu i'm a bird watcher at home now i have a lot of trees around and i see a lot of exotic bird come these days uh, lockdown mein unko bahar kahin kuch milta nahi hai so they are around neighborhood for the food more birds in pandemic a bird up in the tree is in distress i cannot see her I just hear her calling. Only the trees know the sorrows of the birds. ये जो तीन पंक्ति की पंक्तियों की कविता है. A bird up in the trees is in distress. I cannot see her. I just hear her calling. Only the trees know the sorrows of the bird. The second movement of the same poem is, the young bird in the tree is calling. for long perhaps she is hungry and her parents have gone out to get some grub i often notice bird in the shopping centers by the food court and water fountains in the lockdown there is nothing there for them to eat i invite them on my patio for breakfast sometimes for lunch i interview the birds affected by the pandemic they have many stories to tell i also write letters to the magazine editors who wants to publish interviews with birds it is absurd i invite them on my patio for breakfast sometimes for lunch i interview the birds affected by the pandemic they have many stories to tell i also write letters to the magazine editors who wants to publish interviews with birds it is absurd now i am uh, <clears throat> going to read the last poem uh all the earth remembers well this poem i wrote on earth day this year and uh, this poem um of course you you have given me so much attention and i just um 
beg your attention towards one more very important poem. This is to me for many reasons because I'm going to make a poetry film on this uh, uh, this poem itself and launch that poetry film, actually release that poetry film in, uh, in on coming Earth Day. So I'm working on this one. Uh, I'm reading this poem to you called Earth Remembers Now. <clears throat> With the rain, we shall return to life again. The last tree standing in the forest said before falling in the bush fire australia mein jo abhi fire hua tha us pe wahan se shuruaat is kavita ki with the rain we shall return to life again the last tree standing in the forest said before falling in the bush fire the animals fled their homes a mother koala scorched went looking for her baby limping on the charred ground the birds abandoned their nests and flew to fetch clouds from far skies no one really knows how many birds and animals died how many trees fell offering their last sermons but the earth the earth remembers everything the earth remembers everything she remembers every drop of blood spilled on her breast and the name of all her children taken away from her arms enslaved and slaughtered she remembers their hunger and diseases droughts and revolutions there is no vaccination for our greed and contempt there is no vaccination for our greed and contempt she loads corpses of her children in refrigerated trucks at hospital and drives them to their final destination abhi aapne dekha hoga new york mein kya hua corona ke samay mein to ye chitra wahi se hai she loads corpses of her children in refrigerated truck at hospitals and drives them to their final destination in the lockdown she's a warrior fighting in the front growing food in the fields fruits on the trees cleaning air and sky she has a thousand hands she has a thousand hands she experiments in the labs behind scrubs and gloves masks and goggles she is a medic nurse and doctor behind the uniform she is a soldier as an and an officer in the mountains she is a yogini chanting healing mantra in isolation standing on one leg with her arms up she prays to the sun the sufferings must end she churns out clouds from the ocean's blues and delivers to far extents of the skies she remembers every drop of rain on her face every seed conceived in her womb she had given birth only to prophets and bodhisattvas we have transformed she had given birth only to prophets and bodhisattvas we have transformed a failed mother she breathes deeply birthing countless offspring and letting them go on their path nothing can be controlled nothing is meant to be controlled except for our own pace she reflects in the silences and offers herself to the cosmic yagna like an ancient sage she reflects in silences and offers herself to the cosmic yagna like an ancient sage let's pause for a moment and feel the earth beneath our feet Let's pause for a moment and feel the earth beneath our feet she is there for us revolving without wavering orbiting the sun without failing from the time unknown where is your orbit where is your orbit where is your sun she asks both day and night are needed to sustain and renew but we falter she remembers our faults and tears she remembers our very first step and playgrounds every word and language we have ever spoken she has taught us she remembers every journey and battlefield we have ever been to she seldom talks about our victories and defeats 
but keeps everything that matters to her in her heart safe and unaltered. With her walking sticks, she scribbles the memories of millenniums. With her walking stick, she scribbles the memories of millenniums. On a still night, she travels in all directions and collects the relics of the fallen stars, her ancestors. She picks debris in our alleys and seabed. Sweltering in landfills, she calls our names. Give me a hand, my children, would you? She feels exasperated at times. Smothered in oil, she's a seagull. A turtle unable to breathe on a seashore. She's, a elef she's an elephant without tusks and a lion hunted for trophy. She's a precious sapphire mistaken for a rock. In the hues, in the hues of our skin, ripened in heat and frost, are the colors of her season. We owe to her DNA hidden in our bodies. Every village and town, every nation and destination, every monument and home we have ever built and destroyed, she has kept their data in her core drive. Since the time of the great explosion, nothing is lost, nothing will ever be lost, even on the day of Armageddon. Her backups are safe in the clouds. Her backups are safe in the clouds. She looks into the eyes of her children and smiles. She knows by heart the counts of every grain of sand in the deserts, every leaf and grass in the forest, every calf and cub lashed to her breast, every insect and butterfly sitting on her veil, every fish swimming in her blue eyes, every bird and reptile living in the nest of her hair and alluring headdress, the lines of her hand are the map of the cosmos. The lines of her hands are the map of the cosmos. She sits back and enjoys the shadow play of the sun and the moon, the giggles of all her rivers and the winds playing tune on their ancient flutes. She designs every snowflake precisely and knits sweater for all her children in the winter. In spring, she adorns herself with flowers. In summer, she travels in the woods. In the autumn, she retreats in silences. In the storm, she practices calm. In the fire, she purifies herself. In the rain, she regenerates with new vigor. She resurrects all her children buried with her own hands. She resurrects all her children buried with her own hands. She remembers their graves and grounds of cremations. She remembers their graves and grounds of cremation. She remembers every mountain and cloud, every fruit and flower, every crop and field. She knows the gathas of all kalpas and every scripture. She knows exactly where she had given birth to the Buddha, Rama and Krishna, Jesus, Nanak and Muhammad. She knows exactly where she had given birth to the Buddha, Rama, and Krishna, Jesus, Nanak, and Muhammad. The earth writes her own history embossed in our cells. She tells, she tells her true story to her children in their most vulnerable moments and gives her verdict on their disputes. We can't judge. We can't dig deep enough to see, to see her broken self. We can't dig deep enough to see her broken self. The earth offers her own master classes from time to time on her own schedule, on love, understanding, and acceptance. We haven't been a good student. The earth also remembers not to remember everything. The earth also remembers not to remember everything so she can forgive her children. So she can forgive her children. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Dee. Thank you so much. We have no words, actually. It is just awe and wall. 
I just, it was it was it was beautiful I'm listening so humble, to you. I'm so humbled. आप आप लोग को पसंद आए मेरी कविताएं. ये बिल्कुल ये वो वाला है बिल्कुल एक साथ आह भी और वाह भी. हाँ. यही तो जिंदगी है ना? यही तो जिंदगी है. Yes. जिंदगी आह और वाह दोनों हैं. जी. Uh, and and uh, respected participants, uh, you must be aware that the topic for today was on the bridge, and you must have felt our guest poet there, right on the bridge, between Indianism and Americanism, between legacy, mythology, and modernism, and between all those great feelings of humanity which we all go through actually. the pain that was there the celebration that was there she is reading for one hour or more the more than one hour and i am aware if i am not wrong it is one o'clock or more than one o'clock night at america right uh, so i will not take too much time and as i mentioned that we have two uh, very noted guests here also with us as listeners uh, so i would like to bring in those two of them first and then we will open the discussion I sure. request first of all I request Khushid Bhai, Khushid Hayat sir because because he has the experience of and lot of memories of spending the time together at Gaya. And did you were you were you were referring to television? Basically, television has started at Gaya in 1980, 1982, and mm -hmm. we we watched the World Cup and then Benson and Hedges Cup and then the Shabhi Yatra of Mrs. Gandhi. So that was the very new thing at that time when we used to see that big chhatris at Gaya Club. Right. Mm -hmm. So I would like to bring in Khurshid Bhai first uh, to say his uh, his words, uh, and then Anisa, please. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, sir. You have given me a chance to come here for me. Kalpana Singh Chittis. I will say this about the fact that it is not only a name, but it is also a person's name, and the person who is known. अपनी जमीन से मोहब्बत हो तो वो जुनून एक नए रूप में एक नई शक्ल में हमारे सामने आता है चाहे वो कविता की शक्ल में आए या फिर कविता से जो फिल्मों का सफर रहा वहां तक आप देखेंगे तो ऐसा महसूस होगा कि कल्पना सिंह के जब हम ये नाम देते हैं तो यहीया साहब को मालूम है कि ऊर्जा का कभी नाश नहीं होता ऊर्जा का रूप बदल सकता है तो वो रूप बदला गौतम और वैष्णो की नगरी से अमरीता अमरीका तक का जो सफर उनका रहा वो वाकई तारीफ के काबिल है ये शुरू से ही बहुत क्रिएटिव पोटेंशियलिटी के साथ अपने शहर गया में रही और अपनी मौजूदगी का एहसास साहित्य और संस्कृति से जुड़कर वो करते रहे वो नाटक का क्षेत्र हो या साहित्य का इलाका हो या फिर उसी जमाने में फिल्मों से भी वो जुड़ने की कोशिश करती रही और फिर बॉम्बे का सफर और गुलजार साहब से मिलना बहुत गुरबत रही उनकी गुलजार साहब से भी और उनसे गुलजार साहब इनकी बहुत एक अकीदत का लगाव था उसकी वजह शायद इनकी क्रिएटिव पोटेंशियलिटी रही थी और उर्दू के जितने राइटर चाहे वो रामलाल हो या तारा चरण रस्तोगी हो या मजहर नाम हो या वजीर आका हो सभी इन बड़े नामों ने इनकी नजमों की बहुत तारीफ की थी इस बात की गवाह मैं उस शहर में रहा हूं और मुझसे पहली मुलाकात मगध यूनिवर्सिटी से जब मैं एम ए कर रहा था तो उस जमाने में हुई थी और एक डिबेट के भी हिंदी की बात से हुआ था वो भी एक जमाना था लेकिन गया शहर में आपका भी ताल्लुक गया से रहा तो गया शहर तो के जो लोग थे कलाम हैदरी साहब थे इनका जब कविता का संग्रह शान का पैबंद आ रहा था तो कल्पना ने कहा कि इस पर कुछ लोगों की राय आ जाती तो कलाम हैदरी साहब ने तो बड़ा कर दिया है कि तुम लिखेंगे एक होता है जो यंगस्टर को जो नजरअंदाज करने की कोशिश होती है लेकिन 
ان کی کویتاؤں میں ان کی نظموں میں ایسی طاقت رہی کہ اردو زبان کے بھی جو بڑے نام تھے انہوں نے کافی سراہا اور ایسا سراہا کہ ایک ایک ہفتہ میں سب نے ان کے اوپر لکھ کر بھیجا اور ایک بڑا چیلنجنگ کام تھا جو ان کی نظموں نے خود کو خود سے آزاد کر کے اپنی اہمیت کو منوایا گیا شہر سے بہت ساری جڑی ہوئی یادیں ہیں اور اس زمانے میں اردو ہندی کہانیوں پر ایک بڑا کاریکرم ہوا تھا ہندوستان میں جس میں ہندی کے آلوچک تھے سرندر چودھری جی بھی تھے پاٹھک جی کا نام بھی وہ بھی تھے پھر اس زمانے میں ایک پنڈت سے شام دت شام دت مشر جی تھے ان چہروں کو دیکھ کے رہتا ہے کہ ہندوستان کی جو گنگا جمنی جو تہذیب تھی وہ کہیں نہ کہیں پر اپنی موجودگی کا احساس دلاتی تھی یہ جو شام دت مشر بھی تھے وہ اچھی سنسکرت بھی جانتے تھے فارسی بھی جانتے تھے اور اردو بھاشا کا بھی جان بہت اچھا تھا تو ہم گیا شہر میں جو رہے اور کلپنا سنگھ کی وجہ سے اس شہر کو جو ایک نئی پہچان ملی اس زمانے کے جو کمشنر تھے اس زمانے کے جو ڈی ایم تھے انہوں نے گوتم بدھ ریلوے سنیما تھا آپ کا اس کا پورا ایک شو بند کر دیا تھا اور ہمیں نو مینس لینڈ ایک کلپنا سنگھ کا ڈرامہ تھا اس ڈرامے کا جو شو ہوا تھا یہ کمشنر اور ڈی ایم نے گئے شہر کے کافی مدد کی تھی اور بہت اچھا ڈرامہ ہوا تھا نو مینس لینڈ کا گیا شہر میں پھر ناٹک کا چکر ہوا تھا یہ سب کی وجہ کلپنا بنتی رہی اور یہ شروع سے اپنے جنون کے ساتھ ان کا رویہ جو ہے بڑا ایماندار رہا ہم نے اس شہر میں میں یہ کہوں کہ ہندوستان کو دیا ہے تو وہ غلط ہوگا کیونکہ ہم نے دیوالی بھی منائی ہے ہم نے ہولی کے رنگوں میں زندگی کے رنگ کو بھی محسوس کیا ہے اور ان کی دادی جو تھی کتنا سنگھ کتنی اس کی وہ بھی اردو جانتے تھے بلکہ میں اب پتا نہیں اردو کا کیا ہے کلپنا سنگھ نے اردو پڑھنا لکھنا سب سیکھا تھا ایٹیز کے زمانے میں تو ان کی جو کویتائیں ہیں ان کی جو پوئٹری ہے وہ آپ پرکرتی کہہ لیجیے یا نیچر کے جو میوزیکل تھاٹس ہیں یا جو میوزیکل ایفیکٹس ہیں وہ کلپنا کی کویتاؤں میں آپ بہت قریب سے محسوس کر سکتے ہیں کیونکہ آپ سب انگلش والے یہ جانتے ہیں کہ پوئٹری از دا میوزیکل ہاؤس تو زندگی اور پرکرتی یا فطرت کی نغمگی کو اگر محسوس کرنا ہے تو آپ کلپنا کی کویتاؤں سے ضرور روبرو ہوئے گی ان کی کویتائیں جو ابھی پیش ہوئی کشمیر پر یہ بھی واقعہ گیا ہی کے زمانے کا ہے جب وہ کشمیر گئی تھی اور ان کی وہاں کے حالات پر بہت اچھی کویتا لکھی انہوں نے اور مختصر میں اگر یہ کہنا چاہوں گا کہ کلپنا کی کویتائیں شبدوں کی یا لفظوں کی ایک نئی اڑان کا نام ہے کہ یہ جو پرندے ہوتے ہیں وہ لکیروں کو کبھی نہیں مانتے اور یہ جو نظم ہے جو اپنی دھرتی ماں کی یا اپنی دھرتی کی جو خاموش گوا رہی ہے ہر یوگ کے اتہاس کی اس کی سوندھی سوندھی خوشبوؤں کے لیے جب نظموں کا جنم ہوتا ہے یا کویتائیں جب بولنے لگتی ہیں تو آپ کو یہ احساس ہوتا ہے یا احساس جاگتا ہے کہ ان نظموں نے پرندوں کی طرح ایک نئی اڑان یا نئے طریقے سے اڑنے کا ہنر سیکھ لیا ہے ان کی نظمیں ایکچوئل میں زندگی کے جو قوس قضا رنگ ہیں ان میں جو زندگی یا سورج کی کرنے جو پرزم سے ہو کر گزرتی ہیں تو وہ سات رنگوں میں وبھاجت ہوتی ہیں میں کلپنا کی کویتاؤں میں آٹھویں رنگ کی تلاش کرتا ہوں اس آٹھویں رنگ کو آج 
اس وبا کے دنوں میں اس لاک ڈاؤن میں زندگی کا جو آٹھواں رنگ ہے یہ ہم سب محسوس کر رہے ہیں دیکھ رہے ہیں کہ پنجرے تو پنجرے میں جو قید رہتے تھے اوپے وہ کیسے جیتے تھے اس کا احساس ہو رہا ہے کہ آج آدمی پنجرے میں قید ہو گیا ہے اور پرندے ہمیں دیکھتے ہیں کہ دیکھو جب کل کے موسم میں یا پچھلے موسم میں پرندے پنجرے میں قید تھے اور آج آدمی قید ہو گیا ہے تو اس کی وجہ یہ رہی ہے کہ ہم نیچر یا پرکرتی کلپنا کی بہت ساری پریتائیں نیچر پر ہے کہ پرکرتی کا جو آج حال ہے اس سے ہم سب ہم سبھی واقف ہیں کہ آج کا آدمی جو ہے جس جڑ کی بات کلپنا کرتی تھی ان جڑوں کو کوریج رہا ہے جڑوں میں ہماری سنسکرتی بھی ہے اور ان جڑوں میں ہماری تہذیب بھی ہے میں یہیا صاحب کو مبارکباد دیتا ہوں ان کے کریم سٹی کالج کے انگلش ڈپارٹمنٹ نے ایک ہندی اور اردو کے ساتھ انگلش پوئٹری کی بہت اہم دستک یا بہت مہتوپورن ہستاکشر سے آج اس لائف پروگرام میں ہم سب کے روبرو کیا بہت بہت شکریہ تھینک یو خوشید سر نیچر از کائٹ مچ دیئر ان ایون یور پوئٹری آلسو ریسنٹلی آئی ہیو لیسن اے لارڈ آف ویڈیو پوئٹری ڈن بائی یو تو آپ کی ہاں بھی آپ کی شاعری میں اور بالخصوص آپ کے آپ کی کہانیوں میں نیچر بڑا موجود ہے میں وقت نہ لیتے ہوئے اوڈ ناؤ لائک ٹو ریکویسٹ ریسپیکٹڈ انیس الرحمان صاحب ٹو ایکسپریس ٹو سی ا فیو ورڈس اینڈ ٹو ٹو گیو ہز اور ہز ابزرویشن اینڈ دین یو موو ان ٹو دا کوشچن اینڈ انسر سی سر مائک اپنا انمیوٹ کر رہے ہیں انیس سر انیس سر مائک اپنا انمیوٹ کر لیجی سر وہ آپ کے سامنے سکرین پہ ایک مائک کے جیسا آئیکن ہوگا وہ ابھی لال ہو رہا ہوگا بس اس کو خالی کرسر سے کلک کر دیجئے تو وہ نارمل ہو جائے گا اب ہو جائے شاید یہ سر پلیس سر کرسر اس سے بھاگ رہا تھا اس کی وجہ سے آپ سے کریکٹ کرنے پر مجھے تشواری ہو رہی تھی میں تو شامل اس لیے ہوا تھا کہ آپ کے ساتھ یہ وقت گزاروں کلپنا سنگھ کے ٹریس کو سنو جن کو میں نے دو دو تو ملاقات نہیں ہوئی ہے we have never met earlier on any occasion or any platform so I thought and I requested you to send me the link so that I can listen to what she's going to speak this morning and to listen to her poems thank you Ayahya sahab thank you KCC KCC is doing wonderful during the past month or so I have seen so many things happening from your platform So I must appreciate that first before I speak a word about it. I don't have to speak much. I came, as I said, only to, to be present in this group and to enjoy and to listen to Kalpa Sintetis' poetry, uh, whom I haven't known, as I said earlier, but here I have met her, and I'm very happy to be saying that she's, she's read some of her very well wrote poems. Uh, well, I would say, just uh, add a few lines in the sense that uh, her poetry gives me an idea that She is essentially an explorer of herself and the world together. <clears throat> she is trying to find herself. She is trying to contextualize herself in the society in which she lives. It is a kind of a divided kind of a self that you have here, staying in India also, as well as in US. Even though one has, one has migrated from here, one has never migrated actually from the soil that she has been speaking about a lot in her poetry. The references that I find in her poetry are very much rooted in the Indian soil as well as in the soil other than India. So that gives her a very wholesome kind of a personality and a way of thinking, a very organic development that I can basically think of. Uh, there is a sincerity of purpose and there is a sincerity of feeling in her poetry that I could find. Uh, well, she, the poems that she has uh, read out today, recited today, mostly 
long poems. And uh, I think uh, she, I'm not sure, I haven't read her anthologies, but uh, I think she writes more of longer poems than shorter poems. But the one that she read on the gender poem, three line poem, that was really very, very hard hitting, and I really appreciated that. I personally think if Kalpana wrote poems of this kind, this will straight away reach my heart or anyone else's heart. Because when you write a long poem, the long poem poses challenges as well. Because it's so loaded that the reader has to control that load. And that load is in history, in mythology, in geographies, and human consciousness. It goes far, far away. But it doesn't mean that controlling a short poem is easy. Controlling a short poem is far, far difficult than controlling a long poem. It's a long breath. It depends on how you take that breath, how you inhale, and how you exhale. It's a very difficult process for the poet. And it depends on how you grow as a poet, how you grow as a human being. How you relate with your own situation, with your own context, with your own personality, and with your own sensibility. Very interesting developments that she has put forward as a human being, as a woman, and as one who has migrated and yet has been called by Sahit Academy. And she said that please do not associate me with the migrant poets or, or the poets who have left there. And I'm not that. I'm very much in the soil and of the soil and belong to the soil. But one thing which has really struck me, and I would like to, to find it from her, being in India, I see that um, lots of poets are writing these days. Lots of anthologies have come. You also are a part of anthology that came recently. Uh, I think you were there. And uh, two of the anthologies that I've seen were there. But I find that uh, the situation, the scenario, the Indian literary scenario, especially those of the poets, is very vibrant, very, very vibrant. Lots of people are writing today. Now, it's very difficult to take a kind of a position on what kind of Indian poetry or what kind of poetry in India is being written and what's going to be the future. If I go back, yes, yes sir, can I take a minute? Yes, sir, please, sir. If I, if I think of the present context, I will go back to the, uh, I think, early 70s when Pilal published his anthology from Writers Workshop, an anthology in Ikredo, Indian poetry in English, an anthology in Ikredo. And I remember he wrote at one place that at this point of time, there are at least 500 poets writing in India today in English. This is a very vibrant kind of situation. This remains very true today as well. Many, many poets are writing. So it's a point of uh, how do you explore your voice? How do you find yourself? The references are too many spread all around. Now you have to locate yourself, you have to find your diction, you have to find your imagery. Now, the very technique and the writing of the poem poses a challenge to us as well. So every poet is trying, Kalpana too is trying that way and trying to find a seeker voice, which is, I think, in a position to seek a voice, make a voice. But there's a certain amount of anger, a certain amount of protest that is very, very large in the poem. In the face of it, you can see that there is some kind of concern, deep concern, which sometimes emerges into an anger, emerges into an anxiety that I can very easily listen, uh, listen to, and I can very sens sincerely feel. What intrigues me, one thing which I would like to know from Kalpana directly is, uh, luckily she is here, she has spoken about some literary politics in India, that uh, her poems were not being published or sometimes they were rejected and sometimes there was a situation in which they were not welcome. So what makes you think so? Because I personally understand that there is not uh, enough in terms of anthologies, there are many anthologies coming up. And every day someone is trying a hand on anthologies because I have been in touch and they have been in touch. Sahit Academy has recently brought on an anthology. And before that, uh, Sudeep Sen brought on an anthology. And before that, lots, especially in the past one decade, not less than 10 anthologies have come. So what makes you think that there is a very deep-rooted literary politics in India that allows a certain amount or a certain number of poem, poets to come forward, and it doesn't allow others to come forward? Khushits have referred to Kalam Hadi. Kya bhi bhi nojwaan, abhi bhi likhna shuru, kya bhi kya likhna hai. So ye hota hai. Aisa isma koi bhaat hairat ki baat nahi hai. And there's nothing to worry much about it because if there is a voice, the voice will be heard some day or the other. Whether late or early, it doesn't really matter. Some voices are never heard, even though they deserve to be heard very well. Because there is a situation, there is some literary politics, of course, involved in that. So, Kalma, would you like to respond to this? What makes you think that there is a deeper layer of literary politics in Indian literary scenario today that doesn't allow or that didn't allow in the past you to write? And the other thing, the other thing, that you, it seems, uh, I don't know much about that, but it seems that of late you started or you stopped writing poetry in Hindi and you started writing more in English. 
Now, I personally, as uh, one who has taught, one who has written, and I'm in bilingual, write in both the languages, English and Urdu, have uh, been a comparatist and have taught comparative literature. I personally think that uh, when you know two languages and you write in two languages, especially poems and short stories, these two creative angles I'm talking about, so you you find one voice in one particular poem which you do not voice, the same voice doesn't fit in very well with the other language. So there are certain poems which will come automatically in the English language, while there are others which will come very automatically in the Urdu language for me, for example. Uh, what makes you think that, and what, what happened with you that at a point of time, it seems, I'm not very sure, that you stopped writing Hindi poetry and took up writing English poetry, more of English poetry, because you stayed there in US, or because, or because uh, there was a reception of your English poetry better than what you wrote in the Hindi poetry, and there was some kind of literary politics going on around, or that the situation was not very conducive for you to write in Hindi. So these are some of my uh, say, queries, queries, because uh, I'm curious to know about this. Is there a literary college that you think you have been a victim of, or is there any compelling force that makes you write in English more and less in Hindi? Uh, I would appreciate if you could respond to this. This is just a friendly kind of uh, observation, and trying to know myself, because I do write, and want to belong, and I do belong to a, to a group, uh, which is a which is a small group of which is present here on the screen. So we are all traveling together, we are all trying to find our voices together, and therefore it's better to learn from each other. That's why I put these observations across and wanted to hear from this. Um, thank, thank you, sir. Kalpanadi, please. Yes, thank you. Um, I think I have, I have actually quite a few questions uh, all rolling on. Um, I will go first. Um, it is just that, of course, uh, one thing is that when you are out of sight, you are out of mind, okay? So what I did 25 years ago, I did uh, like any, um, right now, you see, well, a poet writes, one has one anthology. I have few poems published. Out of school, half of half of half of half of half of half of so the, 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 I feel that it wasn't that like uh, tribalism at that time. These days, I see the political and ideological divide left and right. It's not what you can have. If you don't cater to, to the political ideological expectations of a certain group of people who hold the power, who run the magazine, who are the editor, who are watching you 24-7 on social media. And if that thing they determine, they deem, you don't fit quite the, in the box they are with the other poet, you are out of there. Okay. So, so many magazines. I mean, I'm not looking for a break. Pardon me, I'm, I don't want to sound arrogant. I have done enough work to establish myself as a poet. Um, I can... Uh, so I have been writing, but by nature I am not that aggressive to publish. I'm aggressive in expressing myself in my writing. But as a person, I don't I'm not that aggressive or I maybe I'm shy to go and tell people, hey, look at me. I belong, I, I exist. So, what is associations matter, uh, ideology matters, I don't want to do anything like that, but I have to say that I have to tell you that I have to tell you that I have to So, I don't understand that the that the or चाहे जो नए नए लोग उनके बाद जो आ रहे हैं जो उस आइडियोलॉजी को बिलोंग करते हैं, they are watching you very closely like a hawk. And I'm telling you, I'm not that invisible. If uh, maybe perhaps we are interacting for the first time. आजकल क्या होता है ना कि a person when a person friends you on Facebook, he thinks that you are born as a poet the very same day. Well, मैं इस उम्र में अब लोगों के पीछे भागना और खास करके as a woman I find it kind of little bit uh, um, not tasteful to do it. Whereas I see कि ideology को लेके जो लोग political poems लिख रहे हैं या जिनको सरकार की आलोचना करनी होती है जो कि movements में भाग लेते हैं जो Facebook के तरह तरह के posts लगाते I mean they are popular poets. 
I need a, a person who is a comedian can read a poem and वो हाथों हाथ उठा के वो अमर बना दिया जाता है तो जो उनकी वॉइस जो होती है वो आई माय कंपनी इज कॉल्ड साइलेंट रिवर आई दैट इज अ मेटाफर ऑफ माय लाइफ आई टेल यू अ रिवर हैज लॉट ऑफ एनर्जी अ रिवर अ रिवर हैज फ्लोस कंटीन्यूअसली यू कैन नेवर स्टॉप यू दैट हैव आई हैव नेवर स्टॉप राइटिंग I flow. I have my own might. I have my own flow. I have my own pace. But the river ko mor de ki jo baat aati hai na, I yoji ko de ki aise logo ko mora ga. This darya mukio. I maybe I am not. I you know if I haven't achieved anything, maybe because I didn't want it bad enough. I shouldn't even be just been. I just didn't feel comfortable uh, going after that. तो जितनी मैगजीन आप मैंने जितने भी मैगजीन आपको मैंने बताई सारे लेफ्ट उनको एक चीज से आपने लिख दिया ना कुछ पोलिटिकल बट वेन आई लाइक माई पोलिटिकल कॉमेंट एनी वेयर बिकॉज आई एम I have been a student of politics. I have been a professor, teacher, lecturer of politics. So I analyze things like a doctor. I don't get sentimental about political things happening in India, and I'm very vocal. I write on many things. So should I have been reading, reading this? So um, I I felt slowly and slowly I start losing friends because of that, and. Because in the same magazine which you used to publish me, now I have sent to them. They completely ignore it. They don't even uh, uh, acknowledge that you have received it. Or even if you are uh, persistent to ask them whether you have received it, and are going to use it or not, why can't can't they? They think you are unfortunately you are not able to use it. So I have not become a worse poet down the road. I have bettered myself in better way. But it, it is hard to deal with um, Indian politics, and uh, it, it goes without saying that politics is deep in the very world. I mean, abhi ab jitne bhi writer hain, most of them are belong to left. On Twitter, I read a comment of a very famous writer. He challenged the view or uh, challenged to the people of right wing. Give me one intellectual. Who is recognized from your side? And I'm thinking, this is what we have become as a literary world. So um, how can we ignore um, the politics? Is the challenge? No, we say we are progressive, we are progressive. But what is the definition of progressive? Only the develop you assimilate to accept the changes. Whereas in literary politics, we want to maintain the status quo, and people who have a book, you talk about voice of dissent, but when I dissent, you don't accept my dissent. You talk about inclusiveness, but you don't include my voice, because now I have become a Madhya Mali. Perhaps that's the philosophy of my life. I no longer can agree to everything that people from left are doing. I can no longer no. Uh, I cannot agree to the right wing what they are doing. Well, so people like me get anything in a place where they are, and I'm very aware of my challenges. I can change this, turn around 180 degree tomorrow, just by doing one thing. But I choose not to do it. So it is not just that how people look at me, but even how I am seeing the changes, and I'm trying to find whether I'm comfortable. I'm not trying to fit in. I think I have my place. Where I am, I have found my place, and I'm comfortable there. I'm comfortable in my skin. I'm comfortable with my success. Um, tomorrow, if I die, I have no regret because I lived my life I wanted to live the way I wanted to live. I said what I wanted to say, and I did it on my own terms. So I think I'm a very successful person, or uh, uh, writing my own way. Whether a critic writes about me or not, or whether a magazine publishes me or not, and uh, the reason I can say that, and as I said, pardon me if I sound that it is my arrogance. No, Prashant, I talked to you yesterday, and I said when I write. 
or look at myself, whilst I don't see myself as a woman or a man. So there is misogyny in every field. A woman is another Kamari Abuka in Bihar, and a woman is a woman. A woman is a woman. And a woman is a woman. So I have, I, I know what challenges are before me. So when I write, I write, I work, I make a film, I run my company, I don't think I'm a man or a woman. I say I'm a writer, I don't think I'm a leftist or I'm a right winger. I write what my mind tells me, I write the way I see it. I can't buy a lie and sell that lie to myself anymore. I'll give you an example that I'm friends with so many people uh, in Azad Kashmir. Those Kashmiri people give me so much love and love and love and love and love. They don't do it in Kashmir. I've seen it when I sent Azad Kashmir to Azad Kashmir. I said, yeah, you should do a show in Urdu and Hindi. I'm going to read you those poems. And you can do it. And I'm going to read you those poems. Those poems sure. were rejected from a prestigious magazine which has published me for 40 years only to see that the same magazine in the next edition has published poems on Kashmir and a number of poems on Kashmir of the other poet. Why were you so wanted to be politically correct because I spoke about Azad Kashmir? So this is when the religion, when the politics, when the ideology is all coming together. India has changed so much in 25 years. I didn't want to change. I have not changed as a poet. No, I maybe I evolved as a human being. I have maybe trained my mind to see things uh, from both both sides of the uh, degree angle and the result is before me because either you have to be right or you have to be left. So I truly believe uh, it, from my own experiences, from my imagination, and as I said, this is not the time for me to expose anything, but I have many letters and many conversations with people which I share, uh, uh, but that's not my standard. I'm not here to kill anyone. I'm not here to point finger at anyone. I'm not here to make anyone look at anyone. I, I, I actually think that maybe these challenges are posed before me because it is helping in discover who I am as a person, as a creative person, as a writer and a poet, and maybe um, I belong to an island. I belong to an island. He jab abhi kaise the ho? Abhi ki 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 mahat ma? He ek dweep hai jab sak thaka hara sarvi aata ho us dweep ke waram ke. Wo kabi kabi kehte hain kuch kabi hare wo sarvi jo hamare hote hain hamare kabi aur wo kabi kabi hum sun gurt gur hamare bich ho jati hai. And I tell them, and they agree with me. But then they, at the same time, they tell me, oh, I'm sorry, I hear you as a friend, but I can't help you. This happened to me in Sahit Academy reading, where nobody from the left came. And one person who had, who I have published, I run a magazine, literary magazine, international magazine. I have published people who have been nominated for Nobel Prize, Pulitzer Prize winner, Kushi Dhyat knows, or Kahya, who might also be my life and also. आप जाकर देखिए दुनिया का कौन सा बड़ा लिविंग पोइट हमारी मैगज़ीन में नहीं पब्लिश हुआ। I have provided platform to those people from India in my magazines in America, whether उनको मोदी को गाली देनी हो कि उनको और अक्षों को गाली देनी हो कि उनको कांति पे कविता लिखी हो कि कश्मीर पे कविता लिखी हो मैं सब चाहती हूँ। Because I I don't control I don't want to speak uh, you control your voice, you are writing, you are expressing. As long as your poet poetry makes sense to me, as long as your point of view uh, or your uh, way of writing, writing it with correct grammar and spelling, you, you have a good poem, I'll publish it. But there in India, no matter how good a poem is, Ajko nahi chapa hai. But Baji bohut jada hai. पॉलिटिक्स बहुत ज़्यादा है और ज़्यादातर मीडिया और मैगज़ीन्स लेफ्ट विंग के लोगों के हाथों के कंट्रोल में हैं और आई एम सॉरी आई कैन नॉट स्टैंड इन द क्राउड एंड शैड डेथ टू इंडिया वेदर आई गेट पब्लिश्ड 
I cannot stand in the town and कहेंगे कि भारत तेरे टुकड़े टुकड़े होंगे I'm sorry I love India as a whole and when I talk about India I don't talk about India because I'm at home explaining how I feel मेरी जनेटिक मेरी जनेटिक मेरा ब्लड टेस्ट जब हुआ डीएनए तो मेरे पास थ्री परसेंट बलोच एक भी हम लास्ट My closest cousin is a Muslim. I don't know how it happened. So we share the same DNA. We, our religion got changed over the time in history. That doesn't separate us from one another. So the politics of religion, the politics of ideology. Sare they say, "Kamil baat khatam ho gaya." I love communism. I love communism. I want the world to be equal, have equal opportunities for everyone. But the people and the country who who are not communist themselves, how many people are saying that they are? And China, we are the people who are being consumed by them. And one man does not speak on that. But they do speak on that. So I see, I am a person. I see where the difference is. So many things are correct here. Pehle mein bhi baat jo maine ki chal raha thi. जो जो नाए मुझे बता दी जाते तो वही मैं भी लगाती थी मैंने जयपुर में सारे हम लोगों ने सड़क पे मार्च किया था राजेंद्र यादव और ये कौन है भाई मंगेश उत्तरा जी के बड़े अच्छे दोस्त है बहुत सारे तो आपको मैं बता उनके साथ बैठ बैठ के मैंने काम किया है हमारे लोग हैं कोई भी कल्पना की बात मैं नहीं कर रही तो मैं मैंने देखा अभी भी देख रही हूँ कोई भी दिन अभी मेरी कविता के रीडिंग है साहित्य अकादमी नहीं है बट दैट और मी नॉट ऑफ आर गैन व्यूअर्स सेम हुआ हैदराबाद में हैदराबाद में मेरी रीडिंग थी लोग नहीं आए वो सारे एक भी मिले जैसे एंथोलॉजी हुई तो मैंने भी मुझे भी पहले तो लोग आते नहीं हैं आई फील हैंड ऑफ ऑकवर्ड To a new generation poet, I'm telling you, Baba, I'm not even going to be able to read it. I'm a bully, I'm not even going to be able to read it. My name is going to be written. So, this is a big deal. You are writing poetry. You are writing poetry. You are a big shot. Go to Jab Jabu. Yes, you are going to get it. I'm not one of those poets. I'm a woman who creates such platform. I'm a woman who gives opportunity to many people. Abhi mera festival khatam hua. Kuchh hi aapne dekha hai. World class poet for ten years. तो क्या है कि हम औरतों को बड़ा पीछे थोड़ा भागना पड़ता है तो औरत एक औरत जात जात हो गई फिर उसके बाद से ये पॉलिटिक्स आ जाती है आइडियोलॉजी की पॉलिटिक्स आ जाती है तो मे बी इट्स नॉट लाइक आई डोंट फिट इन मे बी आई हैव बिकम टू बी टू फिट उनके उनके नाव में इतनी भीड़ है कि लोगों को नदी में धक्का दिया जा रहा है इसीलिए आई है माई वन साइलेंट फिगर आई है माई वन बोट मैं तो कहती हूँ कि मेरे बोट में बहुत ज्यादा है तो आपने जितने बड़े बड़े नाम गिनाए हैं ना सभी लोगों को वो सभी मुझे जानते हैं ऐसा नहीं जानते हैं आपने सभी बॉलीवुड में सुना है ना बॉलीवुड में भी नेपोटिज्म है या गुटबाजी है हमारे दुनिया में भी वो है It doesn't matter to me. I know Sulora Ekar. पहले के जमाने में देखिए जिस वक्त रूमी हुए, खायाम हुए, हफीज हुए, वीर तुलसी, वीरा, उन लोगों को कुछ क्या कोई मैगज़ीन में छापता था? उनको उनके ऊपर क्या उनका आलोचक उनके ऊपर बेस्ट राइटर होने का कुछ ऐसा ठप्पा लगाते थे उनको क्या साहित्य का भी अवार्ड मिलता था? � लोगों ने उसे याद रखा तो, I think poetry finds its own audiences and especially in this 21st century, the social power of social media is, I can put my things out, it will end up someone, it is someone is going to like it. I want to start another magazine like a Hindi, or कोई Hindi में नहीं मेरी चाहत हो कोई Hindi magazine में नहीं हो, but I am thinking is this the end of my life? I am not that ambitious to do all these things. It is just that sometimes I don't have choice. So, Krishna, I am telling you that these things you are seeing, you are not getting energy from them. 
अरे भावना तो आराम करना चाहती है मेडिटेशन करना चाहती है और थोड़ा लाइफ का जो आखिरी चैप्टर उनको शांति से मिलना चाहिए लेकिन कहते हैं कि देखते हैं तो फिर जरूरत महसूस होती है काम करना सो आई हैव अगर आपको समय मिले कभी तो आप मेरी मैगजीन में आके देखिए आपको हिंदुस्तान के बड़े बड़े कवि मिल जाएंगे जिस वक्त मैं अमेरिका में आई थी ट्रांसलेशन because nobody in the west knows how many languages are in india how brilliant our poets are how rich our history of literature is jab maine google search karke dekha abhi to rashida zahri yoro ka aap log dono hain jo kuch translate kar rahe hain to urdu mein to kuch phir bhi aa gaya lekin mostly aap logo ka aa raha hai prose mein poetry mein abhi bhi kami hai hindi mein aur urdu mein aur bhi translation hona chahiye so i focus in my magazine in publishing the translation uh, i open uh, to to i want uh, to the west to know how rich our uh, history is lekin rajniti se log upar nahi uthe aap kuch kuch facebook pe bhi kuch share kare to log ignore kar dete hain um टैग भी करे तो भी इग्नोर कर देते हैं जब वो लोग एंथोलॉजी निकालते तो आपको इनवाइट नहीं करते हैं तो खराब लगता है ना इतने साल मेहनत की पचास साल तक मेहनत की आई माई फर्स्ट पोइट्री केम आउट कलेक्शन केम आउट वेन आई वॉज एटीन ईयर ओल्ड मैं ट्वेंटी ईयर ओल्ड में मुझे स्टेट लेवल का राजभाषा पुरस्कार मिला था उसके बाद से मैंने बहुत काम किया है तो अच्छा नहीं लगता है लोगों के पीछे भागना मुझे चांस दीजिए मेरी चीज को देख लीजिए और जिसने छाप दिया छाप दिया नहीं भी छापा तो कोई बात नहीं इतनी चीज काम करने को तो पड़ा है अभी तो एक जिंदगी कम है ऑल ऑल दैट आई वांट टू एंड ऑल दैट आई वांट टू सेलिब्रेट अबाउट योर लाइफ मुझे कंप्लेन नहीं है आई एम जस्ट थोड़ा सा कहीं पे ये दुख लगता है कि अपने लोग कैसे इतने दूर हो जाते हैं हाउ दे और ये जो कहा ना प्रवासी कवि का आपको एक बास्केट में डाल देते हैं दैट इज वन ऑफ द रीजन और अदर थिंग इज दैट आप बोल रहे हैं कि फाइंडिंग योर प्लेस आई हैव फाउंड माय प्लेस इन बोथ हिंदी एंड इंग्लिश इन मेनी वेज लेकिन आजकल पोइट्स की पहचान हो रही है कि आप कोई अवार्ड जीत लें अब अरुंधति राय को अवार्ड मिल गया तो बहुत बड़े पड़े लेकिन कितने लोग हैं जो लिख रहे हैं उनकी तरह उनको अवार्ड नहीं मिला शायद वो उतने फेमस ना हो पाए तो आज इंडिया में एक त्रासी क्या है वेस्ट भी मैंने देखा इंडियन लिटरेचर व्हाट द वेस्टर्न वर्ल्ड कंसीडर्स एज इंडियन लिटरेचर इज द लिटरेचर व्हिच इज बीइंग रिटन इन इंग्लिश हमारे उर्दू में हमारे हिंदी में हमारे बांग्ला में हमारे और भाषाओं में इतनी अच्छी अच्छी चीजें लिखी जा रही हैं लेकिन व्हाट इज इंडियन लिटरेचर व्हाट सुदीप सेन विल बी राइटिंग इन इंडियन लिटरेचर What uh, 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 Tahyal he will be writing is Indian literature. The poets who read, read at Jaipur Literary Fest are the ones who are famous poet. वो एक ठप्पा उनकी identity आ रही है. आपने ये बताया आपने अलाम हैदरी साहब का उन्होंने पहले जोक में वो बोलते थे ना कल्पना वो खुदा के बारे में बोल रहे थे कि वो postman ने ना मुझे तुम्हें गलत घर में deliver कर दिया मेरी बेटी होती ना तो तुम मैं क्या मतलब वो ऐसा कह रहे थे ही वांटेड टू नर्चर मी एज पोइट आपने ये आपको ताबिश खैर की बात आपने की ताबिश खैर की फर्स्ट पोइट्री कलेक्शन मगध यूनिवर्सिटी में जब उसका उद्घाटन हुआ था ताबिश खैर आए थे हमारे पास फोटो पड़े हुए हैं ताबिश खैर ट्रांस वाज द फर्स्ट ट्रांसलेटर ऑफ माय पोइट्स पोइट्री फ्रॉम हिंदी यूनिवर्सिटी आज ताबिश खैर को शायद ये कहने में भी शर्म महसूस हो कि मैंने कल्पना की तो एसोसिएशन में चले जाते हैं समय के साथ ये जो शोहरत है ये जो चीजें हैं पहले गुलजार साहब मेरे पास इतने पड़े हैं गुलजार साहब ने मेरे सेकंड पोइट्री कलेक्शन में लिखी है उदय प्रकाश ने अभी लिखी है अब गुलजार साहब के साथ मुझे तीन लोगों के पीछे हो के तब जाना पड़ता है तो ऑस्कर जब मिल जाता है समय के साथ आप खुर्शीद को पूछे ऑल माई थ्री पोइट्री कलेक्शन छोटे पॉम्स ही है मेरे 
सारे पोएट्री कलेक्शन में बट लेटली दीज टॉपिक्स विच आई हैव रिटन लॉन्ग फॉर्म्स ऑन दे आर मॉन्यूमेंटल हिस्ट्री दिज इवेंट्स आर दिस टॉपिक्स दे आर मॉन्यूमेंटल दिस रिक्वायर्स समबडी टू टेक टाइम टू कम एंड राइट आई डोंट वॉन्ट पीपल टू जस्ट रिमेंबर कश्मीर विद द फॉर्म ऑफ वायलेंस the poem of uh, this uh, descent or uh, separation i want to people also to remember kashmir for what kashmir is all about so i took time to write this poem in it took me two or three weeks to complete this poem but i took time to understand what kashmir is hai to ye cheez hai hamare generation ko logo ko karna chahiye unko bhi in naye long poems likhne chahiye thoda samay nikal ke अपनी हिस्ट्री को समझना चाहिए अपने एसोसिएशन को समझना चाहिए और विथ यूजिंग द कॉमन सेंस वी ब्लेंड हम जब अपने आप को लिमिट करते हैं कि मैं औरत हूँ कि मर्द हूँ आई एम लिमिटेड मैं कहती हूँ कि मैं अपने आप को औरत बोलूँ तो मैं रोज सोचती नहीं हूँ मैं तो अबला ना आती हूँ वैसे ही मैं अपने आप को सोचूँ कि मैं जनवादी हूँ कि प्रगतिवादी हूँ कि मैं और कुछ हूँ कि मध्यम वादी हूँ तो वो भी लिमिटेशन हो जाता है आई डोंट कैरी दोज लिमिटेशन आइडियोलॉजी ऑल्सो असाइड आप बोलते हैं एज ए लेफ्ट आपकी बात समझ में आती है अगर आप इफ यू मेक सेंस ऑफ कोर्स राइट विंग के भी बोलेंगे इफ दे मेक सेंस ऑफ कोर्स भी बोल रहे तो उनका भी ऑफ कोर्स तो बोलता है यू बिलोंग टू नो हेयर आप सब में हाँ मिलाते हैं अरे जो सच बोलेगा बात समझ में आती है द सेम वे अबाउट रिलीजन इफ आई थिंक आई एम हिंदू और आई एम मुस्लिम then i'm limiting myself to connecting to the community to my people to my country to ye jo barriers hone jo bana rakhe hain barriers hone khatam hone chahiye agar maan le tootne nahi bhi theke to thoda sa comfortable logo ko aapke jo sampark mein aao aapko chahiye no matter what ideology you keep no matter what religion you follow no matter what you do lekin aaj wo boundaries itni takht bana di gayi hai उसको भेद करके जाना गले में मौसम दिस इज द ट्रेजिडी ऑफ आवर टाइम आई आई एम सो सॉरी फॉर बट इट वाज सो लोडेड क्वेश्चन सो आई हैव टू बिना लाख लपेट के मुझे बोलना आई एम नॉट अ पॉलिटिकली करेक्ट पर्सन थैंक यू डी थैंक यू सो मच दिस इज येट अनदर सेशन टेकन बाय यू थैंक यू सो मच फॉर द रिस्पांस Uh, one may agree with you one may not agree with you that is another thing but but one cannot leave unaffected by your uh, sensitivities and your uh, thinking and so let us now move ahead to uh, uh, we, we don't have much question now but i am handing over the session to saket our colleague in the department if there is any question you may take the question please saket thank you sir thank you karna ma'am you are having a wonderful session here uh, Uh, before we uh, move on to the question and answer section there is an announcement for the participants that we'll be sharing the feedback form the link for the feedback form uh, fill it uh, you may not get the certificate right now because of some technical issue but you will definitely be getting within a day or uh, i'm sorry i didn't understand about the certificate what you said uh, uh, that is the participation certificate now for the participants acha acha to ha to main nahi milega mujhe certificate to mujhe kya samajhna chahiye aapne bahut उंडिंग Uh, you are spontaneous and organic in your approach uh, when you write poems. Uh, to read and research, when you write prose and use the references as needed. Uh, there has been a long discussion now between when we, when we talk about the poetry and the prose. And if I'm not wrong, I can also sense a bit of difference here now uh, regarding the background when you are uh, writing the poetry and you are writing the prose. Your take on this now. Where, where, where did you read the question? And can you repeat the question one more time, please? Uh, ma'am, in one of your interviews, uh, okay. I read it in the Setumat dot com. Uh, okay. uh, you were responding to one of the questions uh, huh. regarding the background for your poetry. Do you prepare for it? Uh, so you responded that you do not feel the need to prepare background for writing poetry, but do read and research when you write prose. 
Uh, there has to be some discussion when we talk about the poetry and the prose. So, what is your uh, take on this now? Because uh, 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 we, uh, we can sense a difference here now in your answer. So, what is that difference now? What is your Right. So, of course, uh, like let's say if I go to write a poem, uh, I write immediately as it comes. As a cat, you know, she told me once or twice. तो जब कुरान शरीफ वो क्या कुनो हुआ आपके ऊपर वो आता है आई यू डोंट कंट्रोल दैट तो व्हेन द पोइट्री कम्स टू यू इट कम्स फ्रॉम समवेयर इट चैनल्स थ्रू यू यू एट दैट टाइम डोंट लुक एट इट्स हे ऊपर से पानी की बारिश हो रही है उसका रंग कैसा है बारिश हो रही है बारिश अच्छी लग रही है बारिश को मैंने ले लिया जैसे मेरे साथ पास में आया ओके so i take at the mirror my first uh, uh, the way i receive a poem is spontaneous i don't prepare i never go and think that i'm sitting to write a poem today that's not how i do but when i write an article or when i write an essay of course i prepare myself because it, ha it is it is non fiction so i have to check the facts and stuff doing it but let's say this uh, invocation poem came and it came just because it was mahalle at that time and it came to me and then i said hey i wrote this two paragraph but it seems like this poem is demanding me to to go further with this dig more dig more, more deeper inside it is just like step by step i was inspired so basically even though i did a lot of research or on this uh, about kashmir's history and all this kind of things i did it as i was inspired to do it as if somebody told me uh, go and find uh, who was uh, nuruddin in program or who was uh, this uh, peer or how this uh, lake dal lake came into creation and what happened and all the things of kashmir uh, like abhi फिर मैंने देखा कि अरे आपने जितने भी इवेंट्स हुए हैं अभी कश्मीर में जैसे द गर्ल्स बीइंग इन ऑर्चर्ड हु वाज रेप इन द टेंपल आई मीन आई एम जस्ट टेलिंग यू ऑफ कोर्स आई कीप माय आईज एंड ईयर ओपन आई एम वाचिंग सो देयर इज अ पैराग्राफ फॉर हर बट आई मेक श्योर आई डोंट गिव माय पोएम अ कलर ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स पोएट्री हैज टू बी पोएट्री फर्स्ट वी आवर लाइफ इज टेस्ट बाय पॉलिटिक्स एवरी एस्पेक्ट ऑफ आवर लाइफ इज टेस्ट बाय पॉलिटिक्स बट हाउ मच वी टेक पॉलिटिक्स को मैं नमक की तरह यूज करती हूँ समझे ना खाना बना रहे हैं ना ही नमक डालो जिससे कि खाना खराब ना हो तो दैट्स हाउ यू पुट यूज द एलिमेंट्स व्हाट गोज इन इन योर इन योर पोएट्री यू आर द कुक यू आर द शेफ यू डिस्ट्रो यू डेफिनेटली हैव सम सॉर्ट ऑफ कंट्रोल बट कैसे मिजाज होता है ना आज ये खाने का मन है चलो बनाते हैं दाल भात या सब्जी बनाए so you are just inspired by pick up your mum aaj dal bhat sabzi ya khichdi khane ka man hai ya biryani khane ka man hai but that's your inspiration you start out with but then as you put as chef's hat you got to think of how much oil has to go how much salt has to go so then you see okay i'm not going to just put too much that that will spoil my food so it, this is how i i'm actually i talk to you about the creative writing process uh, of my own creative writing process the way i answer the poetry so did i answer your question right yes ma'am yes ma'am yes okay all right uh, just just one make sure yeah uh, there is uh, one question by atiya parveen in the chat box ma'am uh, it is regarding yeah. the language english as a language that yeah. is english a threat to languages prevailing in our society your take on this ma'am see no language is threat to another language samjhe na and i have used the power of english to actually forward my own language hindi by translating work into english so how can i criticize english or how can i say english is threat to my language no english has given me another channels to take and forward my language ahead from where it is or uh, so no i don't think english is threat to our language but what is threat is not english it is our system it is the way we decide if we say hey all our languages should take a back seat and english is going to be just the major language which can rule us the danger is there because 
आप जब भी घर लौटेंगे आप अपनी माँ से अपनी ही भाषा में बात करेंगे जब आपको सप, आप सपने देखेंगे अपनी ही भाषा में देखेंगे लेकिन आई अंडरस्टैंड इफ यू आर आउट इन 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 यू नो टू मेक यूर लिविंग यू आर अ डॉक्टर इंजीनियर यू आर गोइंग टू यू एस और ऑन द वर्ल्ड मैप ऑफकोर्स इंग्लिश इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो यूज द पावर ऑफ लैंग्वेज टू टू स्टैंड इन योर ओन लैंग्वेज एंड translate it so i don't see english as a threat uh, actually i english has empowered me but uh, at the same time every time i go to somewhere i tell the organizer do you mind if i read a poem in hindi first because that is like i want to tell people look um, that's what i am they gave me my identity um, my identity as an indian poet or a poet of a uh, indian uh, language is always going to be the first आज आपने आज तक ये देखा देखिए कि इंग्लिश में भी इन इन वेस्टर्न वर्ल्ड हाउ मेनी पीपल हैव डन वर्क इन हिंदी इन संस्कृत इन इन अदर लैंग्वेजेस लेकिन क्या वो अपनी भाषा भूल जाते हैं आज अंग्रेजी दुनिया की सबसे समृद्ध भाषा बनी है तो उसके पीछे कारण है कि दे टू काइड इन हु दे आर and they were very open to assimilate the words from other languages aapko angrezi bhasha mein sabhi bhashaon se aapko uske mool shabd mil jayenge why not we are doing this to ourselves log mazak uda rahe hain ki aapki hindi utni samriddh nahi hai aapne angrezi ke shabd leke apne aap ko aur keh rahe hain ki hindi sabse samriddh bhasha hai because they want to uh, put, put you down that's the political aim there is to demoralize you to make you feel that you are not good enough your language is not good enough the similarly they can say the same thing for urdu they say for punjabi abhi mere punjab mein sindh mein kitne friends hain hindi bolte hain hamari bhasha chali gayi urdu bhasha bana di gayi punjabi wo punjabi nahi bol sakte and uh, so this is this is a sad situation i think um, we all should be proud of our language and we all should do something to contribute to our language i, I wish if i have time uh, some day i would like to translate lot of work from bhojpuri because bhojpuri is my mother tongue and of course i will use english to take bhojpuri forward thank you ma'am uh sure. festival and society over there but definitely i would like to say that you are not silent uh, you are quite vibrant and vocal and uh, whatever you have said in this entire session uh, is exemplary for all the uh, all the uh, creative uh, person those who feel at times no because of many reasons maybe migration maybe because of change of place change of time change of situation circumstances and all but uh, uh, your example has actually uh, 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 given us that strength that capability to think that we can overcome all the uh, problems which come across in our life and in our uh, in our creativity uh, maybe in creative life you know we when we when we are feeling quite depressed that maybe the situation is not right and maybe people are not right surroundings are not right uh, so uh, this is one thing i wanted to uh, uh, tell about the entire session and uh, at the same time i would like to say that uh, you uh, wanted to be called a uh, word poet and uh, again i would like to say that you have succeeded man, because uh, you are not right you are not left you are in center you are not america you are uh, not in india but you are universe you are cosmos you are not uh, uh, men or women but you are a human being and you uh, your all poems all uh, uh, poems whatever you have uh, uh recited here uh, uh they are all uh, they all speak of humanity they all uh, speak uh, for the goodness of uh, human life and for uh, uh, this uh, entire globe so we are very much thankful that you have accepted our invite you became the part of uh, this entire exercise and you are truly beyond borders and we wish that you keep on writing this kind of wonderful poetry and uh, 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 
as you said, that you you are not in a race. You are not prepared to achieve something. But let me tell you, as the audience or as the listeners of your poetry, that you have achieved that. And uh, uh, because uh, we, we are listening to you, uh, your uh, uh, poems based on environment, your uh, poems based on gender, everywhere you have touched our heart. And definitely uh, you you have a thing, you have a clear-cut message, uh, as you said, without any lagla paint you have spoken. So uh, uh, definitely this is something, you know, we are looking forward and uh, this is something which our world needs. So maybe uh, people, uh, who are uh, uh, who, who can speak so candidly are less in number, but uh, no way uh, they are less important. So uh, you have created your own place, and we would uh, wish that all uh, people should listen to you so that they can get uh, get their uh, uh, reform of faith again on humanity. Thank you so much uh, for all the um, uh, participants who were uh, here, and secondly. Of course, uh, Kushid uh, Hayatar has given so much insight about uh, your work and about uh, uh, literature in general. So we would also like to thank him. Uh, we would like to thank Mr. Rahman who has uh, given his opinion in uh, such a wonderful manner. And because of him, actually, uh, so many things uh, came out. And uh, we listen, uh, you know, what is there in your heart, in your uh, mind. And uh, it, uh, the entire session became so wonderful. And thank you all to my uh, colleagues and my uh, uh, students who have participated in this uh, entire exercise. Thank you so much, Kalpana. Uh, thank you so much. May I, may I just say a word of thanks to uh, Kurshid because um, uh, he, he is the witness of my journey from, from since my uh, creative journey has started. And um, I'm thankful. And if, I, if you ask me, believe it or not, uh, <laughs> Ask, ask Khurshid, if I think of all my closest friends um, in Gaya, most of them are Kwam Kwam Te Khurshid, Salam Saab Ki Ti Nakya, Bushra Tarannum, Faryal, and Dina, Aap Mere Friend Te, Mere Father Mother Ke Sare, Munawar Khan, Aur Ye Salam Khan Ki Family, 